The Kyrgyz Republic is one of five newly independent states of the Central Asia. It is a mountainous country with a unique nature located in the northeast of Central Asia, and it borders with Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and China. More than 94% of mountainous Kyrgyz Republic territory is located above 1,000 meters, which means it is prone to natural disasters. In the recent past, Kyrgyz Republic served as one of the USSR's most important sources of uranium and rare earth metals. The mining enterprises that extracted these materials left behind enormous amounts of industrial waste, including radioactive materials. Some 6,500 hectares of land in Kyrgyz Republic have been exposed to radioactive contamination. The legacy of the Soviet Union and the solution of all problems related to the uranium industry of the USSR have caused certain environmental problems in our country. There is a great number of tailings containing exhausted nuclear wastes, as well as toxic wastes, left as the form of the Soviet legacy. Kyrgyz Republic now hosts 92 hazardous waste dumps, holding 457 million tons of waste containing radionuclides and other toxic substances. Five of them are the most hazardous nuclear burial sites. According to rough estimates, the most urgent cleanup measures needed to render the tailings safe would cost up to 40 million dollars. Problems related to the mining tailings have a transboundary character. In general, most tailings are located at the riverbeds, which mouse directly into the Naren river basins. The proximity of most of the tailings and waste dumps to the transboundary river basins Narin, Mailusu, Chu, Sumsar is a significant factor affecting regional safety. In case of the outbreak of the radioactive hazardous wastes, there is a high risk of an ecological catastrophe that could potentially affect territories in Kyrgyz Republic, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan with a total population of 5 million people. Norjan lives in the Minkush village. The backyard of her barrack faces the tailings and the rural graveyard, where the whole kinsfolk of her husband are being buried, the father, the elder and younger brothers. Some people say that the radiation is the cause of their deaths. It seems like everyone has forgotten us. Even the legal documents state that it is prohibited and dangerous to live in the radiation zones. However, we live here and no one pays attention to us. The village was built in mid-1950s. The wooden lodges were raised hastily. The lofts and walls were winterized by the radioactive slag from the mining dumps. The inhabitants of this village, however, found out the truth only a half century later. This incident has received the publicity only when the state committee has conducted the radiation measurements with the Geiger's counter. Nevertheless, afterwards no one has explained anything to people living there. The number of the Minkush inhabitants decreases twice every summer. Everyone who does not have to take care of their kids or elders leaves the village in search of jobs. The remaining inhabitants begin to store the coal for winter. Bakit pushes his wheelbarrow on this road almost every day. Aren't you afraid to be exposed to the uranium radiation? Uranium is everywhere here. Today Bakit has started a little bit earlier than usually, either because he had no classes or because he decided to do so. Soon the first shift will come to the end and the classmates will come to Bakit. Someone needs a pail of coal, someone needs a bag. All of them will go home together. It is far, but they won't be lost. There is only one road which goes by the demolished radioactive mine. Gradually, the springs have filled the mine. Now the spring flows from the mine. Interesting bottom. With time, the stones are repainted in brown color. Later, all of this will fall into the Narin River. This mine was closed in 1969. The unit was under the special control of Moscow. There were no rehabilitation works already for four years. Usually we clean the drainages and make the embankments. I would like to attract your attention to the Mailusu tailings. With the support of the international financial institutes and financial aid from the World Bank particularly, we were able to conduct a large project for the rehabilitation of this tailing. This is the first project which has undergone the rehabilitation works. 
According to the official information, there are 22 million tons of uranium wastes at 23 tailings of this mortuary alone. The landslides, mud flows and erosion processes may demolish them at any time. In this case, the radioactive substances through the Mylusu river will fall into the waters of Fergana valley and most horribly to the basin of the river Sirdarya. In other words, there is a serious threat of the radioactive contamination of the territories of three countries – Kyrgyz Republic, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Furthermore, the dam is in a very unstable position, therefore we have to move it here, to the sixth tailing. Several years ago, half of the enormous mountain in the Minkush village began to move downwards to the waste site. Slipping down every day by 10-15 centimeters, the mountain has already destroyed the road along the river. This is the most dangerous place. When this mountain will fully slide downwards and block the river, the water storage basin will wash away the tailings. As a result, the river will destroy the mountain, and the uranium wastes will travel across the entire Fergana valley. The valley, the inhabitants of which, are the citizens of Kyrgyz Republic, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. There is a road built across the mountain to ease the transportation of the equipment in case of the emergency situation. However, not many people believe that this occurrence will save them from a catastrophe. Dilapidated uranium mines uncovered tailings, radiation. According to the research of the American Blacksmith Institute, Mylusu is among the 10 most contaminated cities in the world. The water which everyone is afraid to drink, the houses in which everyone is afraid to sleep, empty streets. Kajisai Minkush. Experts have noted that the response to the tailings problem has so far not been sufficient. Recently, Kyrgyz Republic has undertaken multilateral efforts to avert the radioactive threat. These activities were based on the September 2007 document on risks of potential contamination of the Central Asia by radioactive wastes. This paper was a consolidated appeal from the government of Kyrgyz Republic, the Secretariat of the Integration Committee of the Eurasian Economic Community, and United Nations Development Program to governments, international financial institutions, the private sector and other groups. Furthermore, today the preparation of the high-level international forum is underway in the Kyrgyz Republic. The purpose of this forum is to attract attention of donors and governments of the neighboring countries to the resolution of this problem. The initiative to organize the high-level international forum on the tailings issues was raised by the president of the Kyrgyz Republic, Kromandek Bakiev. President Bakiev, back early this year, wrote a letter to uh, Mr. Kamal Dervis, who is the chair of the United Nations Development Group, asking for United Nations assistance with the problem of uranium tailings in the country. And uh, Mr. Dervis has written back that we will be providing assistance to the government in organizing a response. Nonetheless, Kyrgyz Republic alone is not capable of resolving the problem of the uranium tailings which have been accumulated for years and which requires substantial financial investments. The solution of these tailing problems requires support and real consolidated efforts of Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyz Republic and their entire world community. World price of uranium is rising fairly quickly and this creates an opportunity to involve the private sector in the cleanup as well as the more traditional uh, sources of cleanup, which are government and, and donors. We also realize that there has been an enormous number of studies about this problem, an enormous number of conferences about this problem, but very little real action, very little real cleanup uh, and um, improvement of people's lives around the problem. So this, this combination of, uh, of, how shall we say, this combination of circumstances uh, has helped the United Nations to define its specific role. And what we would like to do is we would like to help the government to uh, create a network of alliances beginning with the private sector uh, and continuing out through the relevant uh, government ministries and through donors uh, in the Western world as well as from Russia. The Kyrgyz government has stated that addressing the tailings problem is one of the country's highest priorities. In a recent meeting with Neil Walker, Igor Chudinov, Prime Minister of the Kyrgyz Republic, emphasized that the Kyrgyz government is open to all projects and suggestions on this issue. We believe that the government and the United Nations can help 
the private sector in this regard. So we believe that it's this alliance um, of um, private sector, government, uh, and um, traditional donors and that can come together to actually achieve results and cleanup of the uh, major uh, uranium waste dumps in the country. And this will obviously then have direct impact on quality of lives for the people in the villages, but also throughout the Fergana. The tailings on the territory of Kyrgyz Republic are not just a national issue, but also a regional problem. Mitigating the risk of a radioactive ecological disaster will probably require the active involvement of international organizations, donors, the international community, and first and foremost, the countries of the region.